Very beautiful day right here and a special welcome uh, to Sport Rush. This is Wednesday and Wednesday come with a lot of energy. The Wednesday come with a lot, a lot of expectation. The entertainment, the intrigues, the disappointment. Oh my God, my God. You can imagine what is happening right now from Euro 2024 and of course uh, for Osimen to begin uh, precision. Oh my God, with Napoli again, it seems somehow with me. All right, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to another wonderful edition of Sport Rush. My name is Ramsey and up with Jesse number 10 I am the man that got the vibes you know all right so let's quickly take you through what's happening in Euro 2024 and what's happening from the world of sport and what is happening of course from the world of transfer I'm gonna keep it very short it's gonna be KISS K-I-S-S Keep it simple and short and entertaining and interesting. Of course, uh, joining me today is uh, a sport veteran. In fact, uh, he is an analyst, uh, an award-winning sport analyst. Uh, and of course, uh, he is based in the uh, FCT. But then he couldn't join us live in the studio today. He's going to be joining us via the phone line. Uh, and I have uh, joining us on the Sport Rush today. Philips Uja. Hello, Philips Uja. Good morning. No, good morning, Ramsey. Good morning, viewers at home. Oh, uh, your, 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 your voice is down. Uh, is it because of what happened okay, uh, to Ronaldo? Now. All right. Good morning. Good morning, Ramsey. Good morning, viewers at home. <laughs> Thank you very much, Philips. So, how has it been with you right there? Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be enjoying the entries and the moments of the Euro 2024. You know, where you have an, an off-season tournament like this, all eyes are glued on the Euros. No Champions League, no Premier League, no La Liga. So everybody is teasing their eyes on um, Euros. So for now, the talk in the world of football, unfortunately, is about the Euros. Uh, okay, so um, let me just ask you. Uh, which part of the Euros actually caught your attention the most? From everything since the beginning till the round of 16? I think, um, first of all, I, would have, I need to see Georgia um, because um, the superlative performance by Daddy Ago Keeper has caught my attention. I, I, for one, I just have to go and start browsing for his club and none of that. If um, one of the clubs in England or the big team can come and go and get him because the guy has been so outstanding for the team. But um, talking about the highs and the lows. The lows have to be seems like a Belgium and England not performing too well, even though England narrowly escaped to the quarter final. And then the most um shocking team has to be the team that made it to the round of sixteen despite all odds from their group, talking about things like Slovenia, things like Georgia, things like Romania and the rest. So I think uh, those things have really showed the world that uh, actually, you know, we say they have been, they are always been those, but somehow they are sure that they are closing the gap. Yes. But you want to look at that. Uh, I think, uh, uh, Philip, the gap. F Philips, uh, yeah. it, it was so amazing that um, these countries are actually making it and, um, a lot of people didn't expect it. You know, they are not part yes. of the big names, you know. Yes. Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Because even Georgia, they played Spain, and eventually lost Spain. Yes. The last time they met Spain, I think Spain won, white well, watched them 7-1. Hmm. And in this uh, round of 16 that they play with Spain, they even scored first. They hmm. scored Spain first. Spain have to come from behind hmm. to win them uh, four goals to one or the other. So I think that is a good one for them. And then you want to look at some other teams. Things like, um, let's say, the likes of uh, maybe Romania and then Slovenia. You know, Slovenia, it has been the heroes of Oblak. You can see how it saved the penalty. I know we are going to talk about that. And the rest of the so I think these are the highs for me. And then there are also some things that before the tournament, we rated them high. And they are keeping to their billings. Things like Germany, things like Spain. The way they have played in this tournament have really amazed me. And then one of the most disappointing teams have been Italy. Italy, I never, uh, I the defending champion, although since 2016, we've not had a defending champion go past the round of 16. So I think that, um, that jeans is still following them. And that was why Italy also crashed out to Switzerland. But not the crashing out that I even paint that was the issue. The issue is the magnitude of which they crashed out. Nice. They lost three new. Not just losing three new, they didn't have possession. The commentator even said Italy did not just come to the party. And that was just the truth. Oh, okay. Um, consigning England now, you know, a lot of expectation from England. And, uh, of course, uh, 
with the way it's going right now? I don't know. Uh, what do you think? What, which, which of the clubs, which of the countries, I beg your pardon, that do you think will be so, so successful as far as Euro 2020 uh, uh, 4 is actually concerned? Because as it is right now, um, the big names, the big names are feeling disappointed somehow. Like we're talking yeah, about Belgium mind. just now. Okay, look at Italy. Uh, okay, look at England. There seems to be uh, some form of struggle. So, which of these countries are you really uh, rooting for? Uh, actually, going by the quarterfinal um, pairing, it's so sad that one of Germany or Spain is going to be kicked out mm. because both of them are squaring up against each other. Uh, but um, it's still close to call because Germany as the host nation want to host and win. And Spain, looking at the Alamatia product and the way those young lads have been playing together, one we'll want to give them an edge. But I think... Any winner of that game between Germany and Spain is good to win this tournament. No, no, no disrespect to teams like Netherlands, no disrespect to teams like um, France and the rest. I didn't mention England because to me, England is just like someone said, Gareth Southgate is a finish joy. I went to Harvard. Pardon me, but I think that, <laughs> that is just the truth because um, he has no technical input on the team. Oh, what can you tell me? A player like Parma and the rest of your first two matches, you have benched them. It was when the press started coming in, I started fielding them. Even if Anthony that he has been keeping on the bench. So why, so why is Southgate doing that? He, I don't what? know. He thought probably they are going to lose now. That was why he brought in Abatoni to just kick the ball before they kick them out. And Abatoni thought to be one of the provider of the match winning goals for England. He also just have this um, the mentality of having this so-called old name on paper. Mm. So that the same players he's sticking with. And I think that is also costing him a lot. So the, the truth of the matter is um, England, it should be a miracle or a mistake for them to go past Switzerland. Because in, Switzerland is a more coordinated team than England right now. All right. I think the team that England is better than them, but on a team work, I think Switzerland have more cohesion yeah, than England. As a matter of fact, if you want to talk about uh, football, uh, if, if every game, the teamwork is what is very important because um one person cannot make everything happen and um i think um that teamwork makes them stand out and that teamwork is uh, really working for them let's see how it's all going to end for them moving away from there let's quickly talk about um ronaldo's penalty miss in fact it was a talk of town it was um uh, the internet shook uh more so that um some persons were of the school of thought that um uh a player of his pedigree, looking at um, his level, he shouldn't have uh, missed that penalty. And some other persons are saying, well, come on, it is a game. This is penalty we're talking about. Yeah, it can happen to anyone. And then looking at the fact that um, uh, Ronaldo actually cried after missing that penalty. And the mother also cried. And some persons were attributing the cry to so many things. I don't know what you think about that. And uh, can you say that it's disappointing for Ronaldo? Yes, um, just like you said, anybody can miss penalty, even the greatest player have missed, Messi have missed, the other Ronaldo have missed, um, um, Close have missed, all the players have missed in on their pick. But um, the magnitude of which the miss comes, that was why Rado was more pronounced. He missed a penalty that should have won them the game. And if you look at the way he played that penalty, the power behind the penalty was not as that much like the one he played during penalty shootouts. Mm. If you consider the one he played during penalty shootout, who blackly followed it, but could not get his hand to it. But the one he played in normal time, the power behind it was not that much. I think that was one of the main reasons why social media skills were calling for him. And secondly, another thing is this, that um, to me, I wasn't quite comfortable with it as a professional of his magnitude. The game is not over for Christ's sake. Why are you crying that loud? You missed the penalty. You are the leader of the team. You are supposed to change this yeah. player like if they're a moral booster. That oh come on guys, you can still do it. But you mm. went on crying. You can see that player like Vitinha, Bernardo, they were the one now comforting in the year of all we can still win it. You are not losing. The game is just zero zero. Just a matter of you holding on to your to the end and then see how you win the match and then you go up and then you start crying so loud even when the game is not up. I think that was so so unprofessional for him. And I think that was the main reason why the media space, they're just calling for his head and all of that. But I think that has been settled and... Um it's going to go into the next round. Yeah, I, I think the, the joy is that um they are going into the next round. If it is that um they were knocked out, uh, it would have been very bad. But then I think it, the the luck he has is the fact that they are still moving on in the competition. Yes, they are moving on, and then Portugal. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even mention Portugal. Portugal is also one of the teams that um 
I'm also tipping for something. But I think um, the coach should also need to talk to Ronaldo and he should also learn to play without Ronaldo because I think they are giving Ronaldo too much work to do at this age. Personally, I think there are other players on the bench that would have made more impact than him, even in extra time. It's not only him, they shouldn't have just aligned. Yes, he has the strength, we know that, but I think there are also some strikers on the bench that could have been brought on. They have Bungago Ramos, they have um, this other guy from Sporting Lisbon and Porto, they're all on the bench. So I think it's also time for him to also try out new legs and see how they can. Because he, what Ronaldo wants is for his team to win the Euros. It's not for personal uh, glory. If it's for personal glory, I think he has won everything. Oh. He has won the World Cup, he has won the European. But I think if he wins this European Cup for the second time, I think he can compensate him for not winning the World Cup. Oh, okay, uh, finally, before I let you go, uh, uh, okay, not finally, before we stop talking about Ronaldo, Ronaldo is a star, so don't be surprised if we're talking so much about him. Then, uh, uh, finally, before we leave the issue of Ronaldo and get into the world of transfer, let me ask you, because I, I actually saw you posted something when uh, people were saying this is going to be the last um, uh, Euro or, or for, uh, for Cristiano Ronaldo, that uh, he may be resigning soon, and you said something like, well, my bro, you have not won the World Cup, so you should just keep it low for now. <laughs> what would you have to say about that in just one yeah, minute? No, actually, don't mind me. <laughs> you know, those are the fantasies we throw out. And actually, the, the statement Ronaldo made was that um, he's actually not competing for anything, that he has won everything, that he wasn't crying for his personal lawyer, that he just crying for the output of the thing, that what is left for him to win. So I think there's a need for us to still remind him that, yes, there's something left for you to win. And that thing is the World Cup. So it's not his partner against Ronaldo fans. And so I think <laughs> you have to tell him that, yeah, bro, you've not won the World Cup yet. Uh -huh. Because, you know, as, time, as long as we are in this generation, the comparison between Messi and Ronaldo still goes on. Yeah, but that's true. That's true. In, yes, they will always say, uh, uh, Messi has just won the World Cup. Ronaldo has not won it. So I don't know how his strength is going to carry him. Because the next World Cup by then will be around 41, 42. Is going to create a history of going to the World Cup to see if he can lift it. All right, thank you very much, uh, Phillips. Let's just round it up from the world of transfer right now. From what is happening in the world of transfer, uh, just a uh, uh, few days ago, um, we heard that um, Osimen is still in Napoli. Uh, his deal is not totally sealed with any club yet, yeah. despite the fact that a lot of people were coming for him and um, he may be starting the preseason with uh, Napoli yet. Then um, we we'll still talk about other transfer from Pape. It is a seal. Is it, it is a done deal already. And um, some other clubs are still looking for the player that is suitable for them. What would you have to say about um, the transfer window so far? The transfer window is not fully open, but then uh, you see what's going on. What would you have to say about that beginning from Osimen down to other underground um, transfers that has been going on already? Yes, using Osimen as a kind of point of contact for all the transfer deals. We have so many transfer deals, especially Chelsea, that have gone about signing any Tom Dick and Harry on the streets of England and Europe. <laughs> what do you mean Osimen, every Dick and Harry on the Osimen street of England? Phillips! <laughs> is, is, is the fact that... Um, <laughs> yes, of course, that is what Chelsea is doing now. <laughs> even me now, even like they want to sign Fabinho and the rest. Because to me, the signings they are making is nothing to write. Yeah, you don't about. finish Chelsea. Talking about, <laughs> talking about, talking about the cement, um, the hard work he had might not do him a favor as long as this hero is concerned, uh, this uh, transfer window is concerned. Mm. Because, you know, as much as we are looking for players, we should also look at the attitude. Yeah. You remember a player like um, Gattuso, the likes of, um, what is he called, Mario Balotelli. They had and even uh, Ibro, Ibrahim Movie to some extent. Their anger issues are the way they had with their coaches also cause them the kind of their, That's their true. career. That's you know, very that. true. So That's true. It might not be all connected with the fact that some of the clubs wanted him, but because of the hard work they have with me, the judge on live Instagram, they are all just waiting to see how he's going to find out whether he's going to apologize or all the rest. But I think if you have a contract in Napoli, whether he's one of that contract is what we want to see. But I learned Anthony Conte, the new coach of Napoli, I've told him he's not part of his plan. They are talking about getting mm. Lukaku and the rest. So I think Osima is going to move. But what he's going to do is, to do is he moving to, to another big team in Europe or is going to decide either to cash in on the money. Nice. That's what we wait on to see. But don't you think he's too young to just go to Saudi Arabia to catch in the money? Is he not too young for that? Players, are younger players in Saudi Arabia. But then but a lot of people. I think they have players like Gray. But just that some of them go in there when they play one or two seasons and they get the big money, they leave. They, they leave and they and retire. The career yeah, is over. Yeah, that's what he also did. It. He went to China at the time of his career. After going to the China after two seasons, or then about he came oh, back. Even Ojo and Zalo, they all did it. 
But I think uh, just like um, one of the uh, footballers told us back then that um, football has no passion. So it's what you get that you take home. So this is their own lifetime investment. So most That's times, it. if they want to cash in on the money, especially when you are coming from Africa, I know the poverty rate of Africa, so money might be a very motivating factor for them. It's, it's just... With human it's, life, it might so even uh, not just with human life. People look mad. It's being by Saudi Arabia club. Yeah, I saw yeah. something about how many billion then. So I mean, when you convert this money to Nigerian uh, currency, you see that the money is too outrageous. So some of these people might just want ha, to move. After it's money they are looking for. A lot of them go to places where they can make money and retire. We heard um uh Uja Uja signed a new contract too and um Yes, 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 he has gone to Bulgaria. We put that Anthony Flodi, Uja, yeah, yeah of Green Yeah. That's to put that Flodi, and the put that Flodi, we know is the team in the Bulgaria League. I think the last notable Nigerian player they have was Steve Nizi. I think Nizi was also a Benway product. He was, a, was born and brought up in Makodi. So I think uh, having Anthony Uja is going to be a familiar ground for him. And there are also some Nigerian players in the club already, about five for them. So I think certainly now in the club, Anthony Uja is going to be a very good one for him. All right, thank you very much, Phillips Uja, for joining us on Sport Rush this beautiful Wednesday morning. Thank you, Ramsey. It's my pleasure. All right, do have a wonderful day ahead of you. Bye bye for now. And you too. Bye. All right. Thank you. Okay, that was uh, Philips Uja joining us live uh, today on Sport Russia. It's been a very wonderful time. And of course, I told you, so many things are happening from uh, the water sport. And we will not fail to bring you the details here every time we come up. As a matter of fact, uh, things happening from Euro. He has uh, said, well, Ronaldo, it's not over yet until it's over. The competition between Ronaldo and Lionel Messi is still on. How many World Cup has uh, Lionel Messi won and how? How many have Ronaldo actually won? Then talking about transfer. Well, everything you do on the field of play has been looked at by coaches around the world. Uh, Victor Simon, can we say the statement uh, and the bashing and the lash out on uh, Fini the judge is uh, about having a toll on uh, um, the Napoli striker talking about Victor Simon because uh, he may be starting pre-season in uh, Napoli though his uh, time is not totally over in uh, Napoli yet. Yeah, then we come to talk about uh, the actions uh, from uh, uh, of course uh, the transfer window again and of course uh, from Euro 2024 well more details will still be coming on your way and I'm going to be bringing it to a wrap right here my name is MC Ramsey with Jesse number 10 I'm going to be coming on your way again and that's going to be on Friday when we bring you to speed with the TGIF edition of uh, Sport Up, uh, Sport Ignite, Sport Unite Sport is a game that brings a lot of people together, no enemy no friend, no permanent friend, no permanent permanent enemy as far as sport is concerned but then it's the, the most entertaining game right now as far as uh, uh, the world of sport is concerned now uh, football the round later game is more entertaining than any other game that's for me and that's for some other persons every other person have their own game that is entertaining to them i will come on your way again like i said and that's gonna be on friday bye bye for now and have a wonderful day